I was called into the service in 43. So that meant leaving, going to uh, camp in Fort Lee, Virginia, and then to New York and right on across the sea uh, in, uh, must have been June of 44. 44. Right on across the sea. And uh, I was, as I said, I was licensed minister, but not ordained. No, I was ordained, but I didn't have schooling. So they would not accept me as a chaplain. But I did assist the chaplain in preaching and visiting the sick, the wounded. When we go across the sea, he would go to the black, to the white. Of course, I went to the blacks, and uh, had a very experience in England. We were in the hospital, we came out, and uh, a black soldier, I think he must have been a sergeant, stripes on, super pressed. Uh, Pants, blouse, and shoes, and a white nurse hanging at this nurse head on nurse's uniform, holding him on arm. <laughs> so the captain, Chapman, cleared his throat, said to me, Green, don't you think that soldier would feel better with one of his own? I think, <clears throat> I said, I'm sure of that, but anything serves as a substitute. So we drove 35 miles in silence. I said, well, I guess this one stripe I have will be taken. <laughs> but uh, so, so, that was, uh, so that was my job, or that what they called upon me to do. So then I began to have service with my company, 215 men, every Sunday, somewhere, wherever we could make a platform, in the field, in the cave, wherever we were. We try to have service. We would have service. I had a fellow from Norfolk, Virginia, and one from Pittsburgh, and one from Philadelphia. Three fellows were saying, Taft, the one from Philadelphia, could also play if we ever got the musical instrument. So they would lead to singing, and I would do this preaching and what have you. So we had a, that was the kind of experience uh, that we had during that time. How difficult was it for you, to, uh, to any uh, uh, man placed in this position, how difficult was it for you to minister um, in, in a war situation? I mean, there people, the experience of death was very real. The, ex the men, you know, away from their families. I mean, so much misery. How, how See, we were not in it. What we we were in service outfit that protected or pushed up foodstuffs and oil, gas. I come to build shelters, the trucks to unload if the comes were going to be. We were near, but not two or three times we had to take cover on December the thirtieth. 31st, 45, 45. When the Germans came over, we were in Holland, and uh, they lit up the city with the fire that night. One of our soldiers was killed, and another one, his leg, when they shut up, amputated. But nothing happened to the others of us or anyone around. Um, I accepted that task just like I do my, my church. This is, this, these are people that you minister to, and uh, not think just because you're out here, because this thing has happened to you, or you're sick, or the doctor won't, don't want to treat you, or what have you. So we run into that kind of thing. The doctor say, you're not sick, and uh, you know, fellas, aching. 
those kind of things. That a fellow that couldn't uh, have the sleep in. I don't know how he got in the army. Had the sleep in the. He said, "You put me on guard duty." You say, "You want me to go to jail?" I said, no, "What do you mean?" He said, "I stand, but I'm going to sleep." He said, "I can't, I can't stop." I said, "Did do the people know that?" He said, "No." I said, well, "You report the sergeant first thing in the morning." I said, that let them do something about that because here you are. She said, I send you out there. Somebody else send you out there. I kept the company of rock and sent fellows to do the guard duty. And then you out there and fall asleep. And captain, somebody come by and shoot you, do anything. And you, you, he said, so funny. They, 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 he, he did get out. He did get out. But it wasn't, say yes, how difficult. To me, it was not a difficult task.